much better. All right, guys, I hope you are having an awesome day. It is a beautiful sunny day out here in Vancouver. It has been raining for weeks. I haven't been able to really make this video and I've been dying to make this one for you guys. I, I'm not even gonna run the intro. Normally I run that intro at the beginning. I'm not even gonna run it. I'm just gonna get straight into it. So, I've managed to finally get about a thousand kilometers uh, on this new uh, clutch and the freshly built uh, MT82 transmission. And a lot of people have been dying, myself included, to know, has it solved the problem? Have we finally fixed this high RPM lockout? Well, that last shift was at 7,500 RPM, right into third gear, chirp the tires, no problem. So I'm really relieved that I've finally been able to solve this issue. So there's a ton of stuff I want to go over in this video with you guys. I want to kind of explain everything. I know there's lots of comments, there's lots of debate about the transmission. Everyone has their different opinions. I'm going to kind of summarize everything now as to where I stand today and what I think about this transmission currently in its current uh, build and configuration. So. Number one, guys, I've done a lot of different parts over the, since I got the car trying to solve the common issues with this transmission. And, and here's my overall opinion. I think the MT82 transmission is plagued with lots of different issues and lots of different variables. And a lot of different things can solve certain things for certain people. But really, there's the high RPM lockout, there's the one, two lockout, there is the stiffness and notchiness getting into gear. There is the losing clutch pressure, uh, the pedal. It'll basically, you know, you do a high RPM shift and all of a sudden you've lost half of the pedal travel. All of those things. All of that has been solved up until this point. Uh, no, the car hasn't been tracked. Obviously, I've only put a thousand kilometers on the clutch. So I know a lot of guys are going to say, hey, you're going to blow this transmission. You're probably right, but here's the one thing I really want to emphasize, guys. This transmission rebuild that I just had done was done completely under warranty. I, I didn't pay anything to have it done, so it makes no sense to put the money out right now and have Ben Calamer do a transmission rebuild on this thing. If one, I just don't know what I'm going to do with the car. I'm keeping it, but I don't know what direction I'm going to go as far as how I'm going to continue to do the build on it. And once again, it was free. Uh, I was able to give them a new clutch, flywheel, you know, uh, pressure plate, uh, everything, right? New throw bearing, new pilot bearing. I, I didn't cheap out. I, I, I got ARP bolts. I got Ford Racing bolts for the uh, pressure plate. Uh, I got them a cloud uh, throw bearing, and I got Ford Racing pilot bearing. Like, I, I didn't go all out. I, I bought uh, the spec clutch, the stage one clutch, which I'll talk about in this video as well. And I went with the light and steel flywheel. So, you know, it was a good combination. I, I spent a good chunk of money uh, getting that set up to put into the car, and they did the rebuild. So, the one drawback I would say right out of the gate that I just want to give a disclosure on is they definitely put the kind of Ford stock uh, transmission fluid back, back in it. So, it is notchy, uh, especially when it's cold. I definitely feel the notchiness uh, in the transmission as it warms up. It gets a little bit smoother, so by the time I get to work, it's usually okay uh, but that nauseous is still there and like I said for the last two weeks since I've been putting this thousand kilometers on it it's been just torrential downpour uh, here in Vancouver so it's kind of good in the sense that you know I knew I couldn't floor it I knew I couldn't do any full throttle accelerations and hard shifts uh, so I had to break the whole gear and thing in I put the thousand kilometers on it and now that we're finally getting some decent weather the last couple days I've been kind of slowly pushing it just a little bit more just a little bit more and it is not once has it locked out on me I honestly think that has everything to do with the clutch now a lot of guys have said that but when I think about the mechanics of how everything's involved how everything's working in the transmission I really think that is the key piece that solved it uh, the transmission was plagued the the gears were just badly, they were just poorly built. Like the guys who did the rebuild on it showed me them and they're like, these things were just bad right from the get-go, right from the factory. So I knew that, you know, having to go through that, it was just, I just had to spend the money and, you know, let the, or let them spend the money <laughs> and let them fix it and put new gears in and, and see what that does. So, you know, the notchiness is still gonna be there for a bit. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more on the transmission and I'm gonna go back to the uh, Royal Purple Synchro Max. I'll, I'll throw that back, back in. That'll probably get the smoothness back in because I didn't notice it when I did it 
Uh, it helped. It definitely was a lot smoother, especially when it was cold. But yeah, that it's it's looking like it's so far so good. My only kind of you know thoughts that I'm thinking about going forward to kind of finally finish up the last minute details on the transmission is I went with a Blowfish Racing bracket and I had the original first generation MGW uh, shifter in the car already installed and the combination you know definitely makes the shifter feel better it reminds me of my 67 with a four-speed top loader like it's very direct uh, but it rattles the shifter just rattles like crazy I changed out the factory shift knob assembly to like an aftermarket one hoping maybe that was the source of the rattle I've actually isolated it down to the actual shifter itself there's these two counterweights uh, built into the actual base of the shifter and I think those are what are actually rattling around so uh, yeah I might want to go with a different shifter I definitely want your guys opinions a lot of guys say go with the MGW race spec it kind of integrates the uh, blowfish racing bracket and shifter all into like kind of one assembly so I want to try that out maybe uh, a lot of guys like Barton um, so I'm kind of up in the air. I'm not, I'm not, I haven't made a firm decision on that as to what I want to do. I'm just honestly excited that I'm no longer grinding every time I shift into third. And hey, fifth, fifth works. No, uh, no grinding into fifth too, so that's great. Uh, the car, we removed the tune. I think I mentioned that in another video. We removed the tune before we brought it into the dealership, and I haven't put the tune back on the car because I said, hey, I'm breaking in a clutch. I mean, I'm not gonna be doing anything crazy. Why have the tune on the car? So we're planning on putting the tune back in, tweaking it a little bit, because as you guys remember, when I installed the tune and we did the dyno tune on it, uh, it was a super hot day, and the car was just pulling timing like crazy. We obviously made really good numbers, but we kind of wanted you know do another dyno on it now that it's a little bit cooler it is it is getting you know right almost into winter we're late fall right now and uh, you know this is the time of year where you're gonna kind of make the big power numbers right because you got really cold air uh, you're giving it all you can so I really want to do that soon uh, I got some parts coming though so I don't want to uh, you know give away any information right now but I got some stuff coming that I'm gonna put on the car and uh, I was talking to some of my other buddies uh, the, the little car group I've got out here and they're all like put the cards put the parts on now I was waiting like should I wait till spring you know and they're like no 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 do it now so I'm probably gonna do that before I bring it to the dyno so we'll definitely be doing a ton of more videos on that and if you guys have been watching this you're probably going hey wait wait what happened to the back of your car Where, where's the cross brace where's the harness bar well I'm just buttoning up a video right now that I shot before I filmed this one I want to get this one up first so I'm kind of wanting to give you guys an update but uh, in that video I'm gonna go over the reasons why I've put the rear seats back in they're kind of some important special reasons for me it is winter so I don't want to give that away but you know I'll explain all in that video but uh, yeah there's definitely reason why I did it and no, I'm, I'm not selling the cross brace in case anyone starts messaging me. I already had tons of guys asking. Uh, but no, I'm, I'm keeping the brace. The car will eventually evolve back into a real track machine. But as you guys know right now, it, it's my daily driver. It's my only car. So I kind of felt, you know, I'm going to put these back seats in for some reasons. And then uh, we'll go from there. But that kind of encapsulates all that stuff. In my other video, I did talk about getting this car ready for winter, and one of the big things that I've done, and I'll talk about it now, is I've swapped out the tires. So I still had the factory Pirelli P0s on the car. Um, if you watch my five things I hate about my Boss 302, I, I don't pull any punches and I really explain what I don't like about the Pirellis. Now, the one thing I do want to add to that, because I, if my memory's correct, I do believe I filmed that before I did a serious track day with the Pirellis. The Pirellis are great on the track. Like, they're an awesome tire if you know, you're pushing them and I think you get a lot of heat into them. Once you get that heat into those tires, I think they operate well. But here in Vancouver, we kind of live, you know, it's rainy Vancouver, everyone knows that. And it's, the climates here are generally mild, uh, but they're not California, right? Like we still get below freezing. And with all the rain, I just find those tires don't work in the rain. They're, they're not, they're not the right kind of tire. And especially if I'm gonna daily this car, we're gonna get snow. We had a record breaking snowfall last year. Uh, this year, you know, I was a gambling man and I said, there's no way it's gonna snow like that again. And, you know, every, it always seems to snow like that every five years. Well, they're kind of calling for some pretty serious snow again. So uh, we'll, we'll see, uh, but I'm, I'm trying to be prepared. So 
what did I end up getting? I ended up going with Continental DWS 06. Uh, I had heard so many great things about these. I, like you guys, I, I rely heavily on reviews and things like that online. And so many people spoke very highly of them. A couple guys in my group, they actually run these tires on previous cars or their daily drivers. And so I was like, okay, I, I think these are definitely gonna be the tires to go with. So they're running on the stock Boss 302 wheels and the stock sizes. So 255, 40, 19 up front and 285, 35, 19 in the rear. I cannot believe how good these tires are. They are just absolutely amazing. Like I said earlier, we have had torrential downpour for the last two weeks, and I actually had these tires mounted during those two weeks. I full throttle punched it the other day in the rain, grabbed second, grabbed third, and I didn't spin any tires. Like I couldn't believe how well these things grip. The turn-in response on them is really nice. They're pretty sharp and direct. They don't, there's no sense of vague in them. And oddly enough, they're quieter, which for an all-season tire that's supposed to be dry, wet, and snow, I was kind of expecting them to be a little bit noisier, but compared to the Pirelli P0s, they're quieter. So that's kind of a nice trade-off. You get really sharp response, great wet traction, which we're gonna have tons of rain. That's what we get most of the time. Uh, so I'm thrilled with these tires so far. Yes, they're brand new, and typically that's when a tire is gonna be performing at its best, but we'll see. I mean, I'm definitely gonna keep you guys updated, and I think at the end of the season, I'll kind of do an overall review on them and let you know what my honest opinion is of these tires after going through fall, winter, and then spring again. Speaking of spring, I actually have a track day event lined up at one of our local road coursing uh, racetracks in the spring, which I can pretty much guarantee is going to be a rainy, wet track day. So these tires, I kind of thought strategically, and I figured I'm going to run these tires when I go to do that event because that'll be the best combination. I mean, why not have a really good tire that's supposed to be awesome in the rain on a track day? And I can really kind of review them in that kind of situation and environment. So I'm super thrilled about that as well. So yeah, I, I don't know, guys. I'm really pumped right now. It's nice to be driving the car again. I mean, uh, when it comes to the clutch and the light and steel th flywheel, I feel like the car accelerates a little bit faster, it's a little bit sharper, but I gotta be honest, I didn't have the car for over 30 days. And then on top of that, I had to drive the car really conservatively for two weeks. So maybe my memory's not that great, but they feel good. Uh, I'm not having any major issues with them. They, they seem to be, or sorry, the it seems to be revving quickly. So I'm, I'm kind of happy about that. Um, it's gripping hard and the clutch isn't honestly that much stiffer than stock. Like it, I, I daily it, it's, I'm in stop and go traffic quite a bit when I'm trying to get through uh, some of the big parts of the city. So it works great there and, and it, I don't feel like it's stiffer. So uh, to live with this clutch, absolutely, as a daily, I, I think it's a great clutch. And it holds, what, 550 foot pounds of torque. Uh, for naturally aspirated Coyote, not really going to produce much more torque than that like you'd have to go supercharged or nitrous or turbo to really kind of push it so you know as much as it's always great to buy a better clutch which i agree with to a certain point um i just i know i'm never going to not be naturally aspirated in this car uh, unless i get a gt350 or something and then i decide to supercharge this one for the heck of it maybe but by the time I can afford to do that, I'm probably gonna need another clutch anyways. So in the meantime, I love the naturally aspirated aspects of a Boss 302. Love how it sounds at high RPM. Uh, I've, my last car was a supercharged uh, Celine Mustang. So I was really, I loved that car. I absolutely adored it. It made about the same amount of power as this thing, but supercharged two valve. Now you've got this high revving four cam, uh, beautiful engine in this thing. So it's different and I, I kind of want to enjoy it for that rather than changing to something else. So yeah, guys, I got tons more videos I'm going to do this week. I'm trying to crank them out for you. The weather's finally agreeing with me. So I'm going to capitalize on this as best as I can and uh, look forward to the next one, guys. Like I said, I'm, I'm working on the one that I, I talk about this. So I'll try and get that one updated soon. And I got a few other surprises coming, guys. So thanks again. Like always, like this video, subscribe if you guys aren't already. I appreciate everyone watching them. And uh, yeah, guys, until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.